joining us. I've been developing this video game, a sort of simulation, emergent gameplay, roguelite type game with a focus on procedural world building, inspired by games like Kenshi and Dwarf Fortress. At least that's what I've been telling my subscribers. But unfortunately, the time has come to come clean. See, this was actually a years long viral marketing campaign for the movie The Beekeeper, starring Jason Statham, which is in theaters now. Look, the bad news is that there is no game. The good news is that there's an edge of your seat action thriller directed by David Ayer and written by Kurt Wimmer with a standing ovation worthy performance by one of the greatest action movie stars of our time. We're talking action, thrills, shooting, explosions, bees. God, I wish that were true. <laughs> but I'm actually making a game confined to a personal hell of my own design, and uh, this week we're looking at procedural generation. I'm a professional software developer, and I worked for a long time on a team whose responsibility it was to optimize the performance of legacy code. But I've never had someone teach me game development, or even C Sharp for that matter. So that means for a problem as vast as procedural generation, I like to take a look around YouTube and see what other people are doing and use that as a jumping off point for my own implementation. And good lord, I feel sorry for people doing the same thing that don't have my experience because these other YouTubers are smoking crack. The patron saint of Unity development, blessed be his name, Sebastian Legg, created perhaps the most comprehensive and popular terrain generation tutorial on YouTube. Now those videos are seven years old, and seven years ago programming to me meant a push-pull split, but the unenlightened might not realize instantiating a thread to run a single method in a terrain chunk constructor is a cardinal sin. And while some videos on the subject are just people drooling on themselves and eating drywall dust, Sebastian did have a lot of good information. But it's a far cry from what we'll need to achieve everything we're setting out to do. The best approach is to break it down into smaller problems and go from there. Now this is going to sound a little bit technical, so if details aren't your thing, just let the video play while you buy your tickets online to go see the beekeeper. First we need to generate a big map of a fixed size, because infinite worlds are for children and the train obsessed. Note that a world here means more than just terrain. We'll need villages and dungeons and landmarks of all types. Eventually, we'll even want to generate history for the world as well, so we can see factions form and spread, settling across the world in a logical way. Then, the map needs to be segmented into serializable chunks, which is to say a single fixed piece of the world can be saved and loaded independently of the rest. This is how any open world game is going to function to some extent, I assume. Like I said, I'm not an expert. Uh, but we can't reasonably run the entire world at once, and certainly not on my Future Shop Dell gaming laptop. So we need to load just a part of the world at a time, and then create the illusion that it's a single cohesive piece. We'll want the fastest serialization solution possible. Then we'll need to build a solution into the game that will load and unload these chunks dynamically in the background as we move across the world. I'd think a bottleneck here might be generating nav meshes, so we'll need to find a way to do most of that work in background threads, or otherwise we'll have to engineer our own solution. And finally, we'll build another background solution to handle lightweight simulation in the chunks not visible to the player. And I'm not exactly sure what this will look like in practice, because there's a few different schools of thought, so we'll have to figure out the right one when we get there. If all of this is sounding like another language to you, that's fine. Luckily, you don't have to figure it out, you just have to listen to me spurg out about it. I started by generating a fixed array of chunks in a fashion similar to Saint Sebastian. The chunks sample noise to generate a mesh, and each chunk offsets the noise by the size of the chunk to form a cohesive landscape. This could go on for infinity, of course, if we generated them at runtime, but for our purposes, we don't want infinity, and it's really just a dumb gimmick if you ask me anyways. I added some UI to generate a world separate from actually playing the game, in the way that Minecraft would. This way we can stop the expense of world generation from interrupting gameplay, and we can also reuse the world in subsequent games. Lots of interesting stuff to explore here, and this will be an ongoing process throughout development. 
for now, we'll just ask for a title and a C. There's no UI to show a representation of the result, but eventually something like that will be possible, I'm sure. Next, we need to serialize the chunks, which means to essentially translate it into data that can be saved. Remember I mentioned we want this to be fast, well, someone named Yoshifumi Kawaii claims his serialization library is 10 to 200 times faster than the JSON serializer, which is what every YouTube video will tell you to use. And this Yoshifumi fella seems like the real McCoy. Plus, I was sold instantly by this graph he provided in his blog post. Wow, that's fast. Hope he ain't lying. Similar to how I make love, we can generate large loads and save them to the disk in milliseconds. Of course, the work being done here will expand almost exponentially as we add generation features, so we can't expect this to stay fast forever, unlike my premature ejaculation. Now we need code to manage loading and saving chunks from the existing world rather than generating them at runtime. You can see this functioning here. These chunks are being read from the disk and loaded into the game. For now, if a chunk can't be found because it's outside the dimensions of the map, we'll just place a flat plane there instead. In the future, we can fill this in with water and blend between the edges of the map to create a continent. All of this runs fast enough to be completely unnoticeable in-game. But as the chunks fill with more information like characters, dropped items, decorations, and locations, this will all slow down. So we'll have to keep monitoring this to make sure it doesn't become prohibitively expensive. Performance is a never-ending battle, like Jason Statham's commitment to high-octane action. So this was a huge step for the future of the project. This is one of the last major technical hurdles I had to overcome before I'd proved I can actually make this game. I always thought I could, of course, but this alleviates any lingering suspicion that development would stop because there's something I couldn't figure out. Not only did we tackle world generation, but as an added bonus as a byproduct to make the system possible, we ended up with a functioning saving and loading system at the same time. Finally, we can craft a complete gameplay loop and implement features without concerns about them not being compatible with major system changes like I have been in the past. That's it for now. If you made it this far, do me a favor, like and subscribe, check out my socials in the video description, and comment your favorite scene from the beekeeper down below, or at least assert your intention to go see it. Peace out, everybody. You are a problem. Goddamn right I'm a problem. <laughs>